Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Informatica World 2015. Brought to you by Informatica World. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for the Cube. Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host for this segment, George Gilbert, Wikibon analyst covering the big data space. And our next guest is Amit um, Walia, SVP GM of the Data Integration Security Group of Informatica. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, Mark. Good to be here. So, SVP, GM, data integration and security. So you got big data, big data analytics, and security. Well, I know they're tied together, but let's start with big data analytics. Um, this show here, you guys have a nice platform. You're not database dependent. Yep. So you have a large customer base. What is the key thing that you're seeing on the, on the big data side of it in terms of being put into use for the analytics and for your customers? That's a great question. So much is happening in the world of big data, right? I mean, in some ways I would say uh, we just got started because so far the big data story has just been, can I just experiment, can I get started, can I just put it into some use to use cheaper processing. But the real value of big data is how do you do more predictive, real-time analytics, right? We talked about this this morning uh, when, we, when I demoed Project Sonoma. And our story there is, look, we have this intelligent data platform that first of all, as you said, is database agnostic. In fact, I would say in the new world, data agnostic, whether it's structured data, unstructured data, machine data, streaming data, social data, whatever data we can bring it into any kind of big data lake, as we call it, lake, hub, reservoir, whatever terms customers like to use. Lake is a very commonly used term. So you can bring any kind of data into the lake, but that's just the first step. Then you want to do analytics. But just to stop you at that point, machine readable or machine extracting structure yep. from the data lake is tough, generally. Data, so far we've used a lot of data wrangling tools to do that. And then once there's structure, the machine takes over. How do you manage that doing it the other way around? Well, see, that's the power of Informatica. We take data from, let's, let's take any sensor. Let's take, when you're using this laptop to watch any streaming uh, movie, we take that machine data, which is completely unstructured, semi-structured, and then we can parse the logs to see, okay, the name, the time, the location, and we can convert that unstructured or semi-structured data to a structured data which once you then put it into any kind of a lake, it's easier to do SQL queries, easier to bring it together, join it with existing customer data, so then you can do meaningful analytics. That's, that's what we do with machine data. So you're leveraging the earlier Informatica technology for extracting structure out of, out of the data? Yeah, I mean we are actually extending our technology, so that when we announce the intelligent data platform, that's what it does, so to us, any kind of data, we're agnostic. We pick any kind of data and we, so you, customers don't have to worry about the type of data. We can bring that data, put structure to it, and then put it in any place they want to put in to then do analytics. And then we take it a step forward. The, the concern we hear from a lot of business users today is that there is so much data, petabytes, zettabytes of data. How do I even look for the right data? And that's where we you know, talked about Project Sonoma today, that we can bring all the data in but then your ability then to truly search, and we, you know, enterprise-wide, not just a direct search, a semantic search, where we are inferring what the user wants to do in a very Amazonian way, recommending data to those customers. Yeah. Bringing that to the data analyst is powerful. Talk, um, talk about the real-time piece, because we, you know, there's two challenges, you just mentioned one. What to look for, and again, if, if you know, we were saying earlier on, on, on theCUBE that, the thesis, if you believe that everything's connected together now, then everything in thesis, in theory, could be measured. Yep. If that's the case, then there's, there's going to be a five nines reliability of data available, so there should be 100% accountability for all actions. Now that's kind of the dream state, but that means for managers have to know what to look for. Yep. So knowing what to look for is one thing, but then actually having real-time value yes. is another challenge. True. How do companies balance that? Because they are moving fast to real-time with the apps, there's more data, geo data coming in, and how do they move their infrastructure and transform it fast to get access to the data, make it real time? Yeah, no, I think it's a great question. So take take an example where you know you want to do real time offers, you want to know, so you want to know what your customers are doing real time. So with the ability for us to bring all kinds of data within the lake, then with the ability of our you know project Sonoma where we have the live data map technology, we can bring the power of all that data. We can have the analyst or the scientist be able to search that data to do some real time analysis. So if you're worried about, gee, 
what is my best customers doing today, this week, so I can give them certain offer going forward so I don't lose them. You can bring real-time data and bring all that data together in a lake and allow an analyst to kind of then search for it, bring it together, do some real meaningful analytics, and then you can put the next best offer in front of your customers, whether it's defensive or it's often. I mean, whichever kind of offer you want to put in, but that's real-time. But that's a in the iterative cycle, because mm -hmm. you're always bringing more data in for richer context, and then you're presumably operationalizing it by putting it into that model, which then t works with your application without human intervention. Yeah. Meaning, your analyst is you know, always finding new data and new structure in the mm -hmm. data, and then that improves the model, and the model works automatically. That's so exactly That's right. the real time. That's right. So there are three. One is, so after the analyst has done something, then we can operationalize that, right? Because then you can put it in real cadence, and then the power of machine learning comes into play, right? Then basically, as you put those models in, they keep learning by all data that we have already connected to it coming in, and you learn, and you keep getting better, and then you can throw recommendations back to the data scientist or the data analyst, things that human mind cannot do, but computing power can take over. That's where machine learning comes. Talk about context and contextual relevance. I mean, you know, go back to the old internet infrastructure search days. You got behavioral and contextual were always the two kill ba kill killer variables. But now you got context. Talk about engagement, mm -hmm. age of engagement. Yep. So those are the new concepts we're hearing here. Age of engagement is now the, the ushering in the new era from productivity to engagement. What is engagement data, and what, what does it mean towards context? Because yep. that threads the real time piece. That's a great question. Think about it this way. You and me as consumers, every cust every company has our data, right? Whether if you if you are a customer of a bank, right? They have all the transaction data on you, your name, your social security number, the balance you carry. But in the world of engagement, there is a lot more about you that they would like to know. You're in Las Vegas today, right? You are hanging out today, you want to do something today evening, right? You just tweeted that, hey, let's bunch of us available, let's go somewhere. All that data is social data, the world of engagement, engagement data, that if they had access to, then they can say, gee, I know John, I know his spending uh, spending trends. What if I put him an offer and say, look, if you're a, pick your favorite bank, a customer, here is a great offer for you to go to the, the steakhouse. Or the steakhouse can leverage that data and say, how do I draw those customers in? So in the world of an engagement, context is a lot, there is a lot more to context. Where you are, what you're doing, what you're saying. If you marry that with transactional data, you just had a lot more richer analytics but you never, you never stop adding context. You never do, you're right. But the thing is, that the con that's where the power of also a data platform comes into play, right? We all want to add a lot more context, which means a lot more volume of data, which means a lot more variety of data. So you need to have a platform that allows you to do that without worrying about, gee, what if my skill sets go away? What if a new data set comes into play? You don't, you don't have to worry about that. We provide that abstraction layer so that bring in anything, Worry about the business, don't worry about the data. So I got to ask you about the, the industry because you know we love this moment in time, there's so much change. I mean, we're talking about data like, it's like the computer revolution. And so, when you go back 10 years, only the data geeks would go, go crazy like us. But it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Talk about from your experience, why is this moment in time so important? Why is the shift and inflection point happening? And, and why is the cloud, mobile, social, where now we're talking about engagement data that it's just going to be game changing. What is it about this time? So a lot of people haven't had the industry yeah. experience that you've had and seen the cycles. What's, why is it so powerful right now? So you made a good point. We are in the middle of the biggest change in the world of IT. So not only computing is changing from on-prem to cloud, but then there is social and mobile data that's available for you, again in the cloud. Then you also have machine and sensor data available to you. So much different types of data, on-prem and in the cloud available to you. And that what is calling the two things that are happening. First of all, a computing change is happening. Number two, data change is happening. Those two changes didn't happen at the same time ever before. This is the first time that those two changes are happening at the same time. Now, the third one is the business value creation timeline has shrunk. Businesses are very much just in time. So with these two changes, and businesses wanting to drive value on a real-time basis, it's a massive inflection Every point. Every theater of innovation's exploding. You got the technical theaters, you got the business theater, you got the social theater. Yep. And so like this is like the management side's also mm -hmm. changing too. Yep. So transformation, that's the big buzzword, digital transformation. I, mean, I love the buzzword, I mean I love everything digital, but like 
what does it mean? I mean, what does a true customer, I mean, they don't say, hey, I'm transforming digitally, they just kind of are kind of doing it, but what does that mean from your, your, your perspective and from Informaticus? So look at this way, when we talk to customers, customers are living in this world where while they have the traditional computing on-prem, it's not going away, but they're moving to cloud at the same time, right? Whether it's a SaaS, PaaS, or infrastructure as a service, they are all leveraging all kinds of social media and mobile platforms as well. So in that world, customers need some level of what I call sanity. So they're looking to us to you know, provide the data platform. So one is having a data platform that can provide them the abstraction of any kind of data and provide them data, make data available for them to do the analytics. Second thing is worried about security. I mean, traditional security is getting totally disrupted. I mean, we've had all kinds of security for the last so many years, but if you see the number of attacks have just yeah, kept yeah. going up. And the thing is, what I would argue is that what customers really want to do is secure the data. But unfortunately today, the approach is indirect, going from the network to the device to get to data, but they cannot still get to data. The other change that we are obviously bringing to customers is that focus on the data from a security point of view, and, and that's why we're bringing secure source. I got to ask about security because this is big. So we always, it's, it's now ratified on the cube multiple times by many execs. Um, I'll just say it. Security's a do-over. What is that do-over right now? Because the perimeter, talk about that going away, and cloud, APIs, you know, real time, new CMSs, how people are interacting on apps, mm -hmm. asynchronous, all this stuff's happening, great. What does it mean for security? What's the do-over and what do you guys see? Because there's going to be breakthroughs in security, mm -hmm. obviously big data will be part of identifying patterns, predictive analytics, but how do, how do we protect the data? How do we protect the environments? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge problem on a lot of our customers' mind. So I would, I would just echo what you just said that, Traditional security is being turned upside down. The thing is that 10 years ago, the size of data was very limited. So you had one perimeter, you had one network, you can put all the data in a vault and you can protect it, right? Data wasn't proliferated. You did not have dispersed geographies, outsourced environments. You did not have the whole insider attack situation, right? And the data privacy and governance laws have exploded. But none of those things existed five, 10 years ago. They're all the most important things today. So I would argue security is going through its biggest transformation ever in the 25 year history. And how can you layer your management of the data structures and the integration over a new security model? Mm -hmm. How do you leverage the two together? So we, we can, uh, we have a data security intelligence uh, platform. The idea is that from this vast pool of data that a customer has, we can identify the true sensitive data that they actually want to protect. That to me is, first First, we find the haystack, and then find the needle in the haystack. Because you understand the Because we understand the data. Structure. We understand, we profile data, we classify data, but then is you're interested in where is this data going? The proliferation of data. Who is accessing it? Who's touching it? Where is it going? Those are all very important things to know. That our data platform is able to give to customers that no infrastructure security platform can provide this. So governance falls out of the management of uh, sort of the structure of the data? Is exactly. You need to know about your data first before you can do something about your data. Whether you want to govern data, protect data, mask, encrypt, but unless you know something, you're kind of blindfolded. So we kind of almost taking the blindfold away from our customers. Okay, I mean, we're running out of time, but I want to get you the final word and get your comment on a, on a phrase. I said, what's the hottest thing? Uh, last week I was at uh, the EMC world and we were talking about you know, the hottest things in big data and uh, the Extreme IO guy said, what are the top three conversations that you're involved in? He goes, metadata, metadata, and metadata. Why this metadata focus and, what's, and, and why is it so important now? I mean, metadata is great, it tells you about data, but if you have to know your data, that brings up the point. Describe the, the importance of metadata and how that will impact the future of intelligence of data. So I would repeat those three words again. Metadata, metadata, <laughs> metadata. And that's what is, metadata is data about data. And with live data map and our metadata technologies, that is the secret sauce behind the new data-centric security, the new data, big data analytics, any data intelligence. When you have the context about your data, who is touching it, where it's going, which, which device it sits on, which reports it touches. When you have that context, you are a lot richer and intelligent. Final question, I want to just do a follow up on that because I want to just quickly follow up. For the folks that aren't in the data space, who kind of understand the value of the data, explain to them the order of magnitude of breakthroughs that we'll see, new breakthroughs. Security's a do-over, new, new stuff's going to enable there. You guys have an enabling platform. 
metadata, meta, me, metadata. What kind of order of magnitude, kinds of breakthroughs, just in terms of volume, will we see in the next few years? For the folks who don't know. Significant, I, it's exponential. So we see exponential changes right now. Analytics is going through an exponential change. Security is going through a fundamental transformational change. Uh, the whole fragmentation of data storage stack, application stack, just look at that fundamental change that's happening. So again, computing, analytics, security, the, the number of transformational changes that are happening at the same time, which is why you know, I, had, I was talking to this large customer and they said in this world of insanity, the only sanity they have is Informatica. So I mean, that, that's what we want to provide our customers. Okay, we got to break it there. Metadata, a lot of breakthroughs coming. We'll be right back after this short break. More data from theCUBE here at Informatica World 2015.